वेलकम अगेन इन दिस सेशन वी बी डिस्कसिंग फ्यू मेजर रीजनल डेवलपमेंट थ्योरीज इन द लास्ट क्लास वी हैव टॉक्ड अबाउट द बेसिस फॉर द कंसेप्शल फाउंडेशन फॉर द रीजनल डेवलपमेंट द टू बेसिक थ्योरीज दैट वी विल फोकस अराउंड वुड बी बॉडीविल्स थ्योरी एंड रेशमेंस थ्योरी नाउ वेन वी ट्राई टू क्लासीफाई द रीजनल डेवलपमेंट थ्योरीज एज वी हैड सीन वी क्लासीफाइड एट अंडर फाइव द सिक्स बेसिक हेड्स दैट्स द कॉन्वर्जेंस थ्योरी डाइवर्जेंस थ्योरी स्ट्रक्चरलिस थ्योरी पॉलिटिकल इंस्टीट्यूशन एमर्जिंग न्यू क्लासिकल मॉडल्स एंड इंटीग्रेटेड अप्रोच नाउ वॉट वी वुड बी डूइंग टूडे इज वी वुड बी अंडरस्टैंडिंग द टू बेसिस फॉर द कॉन्वर्जेंस एंड द डाइवर्जेंस थ्योरीज सो इन दिस क्लास वी वुड प्राइमरीली फोकस ऑन जस्ट द टू द टू क्लासिफिकेशन दैट्स द कॉन्वर्जेंस क्लासिफिकेशन एंड द डाइवर्जेंस क्लासिफिकेशन एंड द डाइवर्जेंस क्लासिफिकेशन वी ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द क्यूमुलेटिव कॉजेशन मॉडल एंड द ग्रोथ पोल थ्योरी वाइल अंडर कॉन्वर्जेंस वी टॉक अबाउट मोर ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक आइडिया सो वी हैव द एक्सपोर्ट बेस्ड थ्योरी एंड द एक्जिजनस ग्रोथ थ्योरी नाउ टू ब्रॉडली अंडरस्टैंड दिस द एक्सपोर्ट बेस्ड थ्योरी इज मेनली अ काइंड ऑफ डिमांड साइड अप्रोच वाइल द एक्जिजनस ग्रोथ इज अ काइंड ऑफ सप्लाई साइड अप्रोच सो वी फोकस ऑन डिमांड अप्रोच under economic convergence in export based theory and under exogenous growth theory we mainly focus on the supply side now to start with we would first talk about the theories of divergence under the cumulative causation so under theories of divergence we talked about two basic heads that's the cumulative causation and the growth pole theories so the first one is the mridals theory Uh, under cumulative causation, you have the Mridals theory, Caldor's theory, and Dixon-Thirlwall's theory. Now, Mridals theory we have already uh, completed in one of our lectures. Uh, just to do a brief recap of these theories, uh, Mridal talked about the concept of cumulative causation. So, what he basically tried to explain is the region which is underdeveloped and the region which is developed. So, you have a kind of underdeveloped region and a kind of developed region which is present here. this underdeveloped region constantly receives a kind of input from the developed region so this developed region constantly benefits the underdeveloped region and when you have the benefit that is percolating to the underdeveloped region this underdeveloped region tries to grow and when it grows i can say there is diffusion of innovation so there is more innovative ideas that flow from from the developed regions to the underdeveloped regions as a result this region tries to grow and so there is a kind of cumulative causation that occurs in the society so that was a kind of regional development that was explained by mridal the next came caldor caldor basically focused his idea about the efficiency wages so his whole concept lied on the idea of efficiency wages and under efficiency wages he tried to explain that efficiency wages is actually the monetary wages that are present divided by the labor productivity or the measure, measure of labor productivity so i can say monetary wages divided by labor productivity would be uh, the efficient wage and this efficient wage or efficiency wage was the main idea for caldor's theory so he tried to explain that productivity is uh, lower in case of uh, uh, industrialized regions and that is mainly due to the scale of economies that occur there finally you had dickson and thrillwall the main idea that dickson and thrillwall propounded was the verdum effect and under this verdum effect they tried to explain the growth productivity and they said that growth in labor productivity is partly dependent on the growth in output so whatever the growth is seen in labor productivity is partially dependent on the output so all the growth that you see in labor productivity is not solely but partially dependent on the output that is being generated and this was again a formulation of a uh, a kind of modification of the mridals theory so these three were the basic theories that fall under the cumulative causation the most important however being the mridals theory now mridal talked about the spread and the backwash effect that we'll see further when we talk we we'll discuss rishman's theory in detail the next is the growth pole theory we have already covered the peru's theory he talked about 
the growth pole then you have the bordeville hirschman and friedman's theory so we have completed the friedman's theory and the peru's theory in the previous lectures just we'll do a recap here when we talk about peru's theory peru basically talked about space as a force so his main idea was the space has a force that and it's a kind of network that exists uh, in reality and that has a kind of uh, force that is generated by a propulsive firm so firm which is more active which is more propulsive in nature would generate more force and would attract more industries towards it so what his idea was a kind of growth pole that would be generated so there would be a region where you would see maximum growth in an area the next was bordeville's theory bordeville's theory was a modification of a peru's theory and he tried to explain the peru's theory is present in the geographical space so presence of peru's theory in geographical space actually was explained by bordeville so bordeville tried to explain growth pole as a presence of the propulsive force that, uh, the propulsive firms that exist so when he tried to explain the propulsive firms he said the propulsive firms can also be the expanding firms the firms which are increasing in area or increasing in their work increasing in the uh, productivity and output or they are kind of dominant industries that exist in the region so when bordeville tried to explain his concept he classified this under three heads the variations are caused due to external and internal economies so his first idea was economies which are internal to the firm so economies internal to firm the next idea was economies which are internal which are external to the firm but internal to the industry so economies which are external to firm but internal to industry and finally you have economies which are external to industries but internal to urban area or urbanization now let's understand this three concepts when i say economy which is internal to the firm what does this mean this means that the lower production ca cost is mainly due to the higher rate of the output so if you have a fixed cost that fixed cost would be amortized by the production so if you have more production your fixed cost would remain the same so you have the economies which are internal to the firm which exist within the firm which is due to the uh, productions or the uh, fixed cost that is occurring the next is economies external to the firm but internal to the industry this occurs mainly due to localization of the industry so when i say localization of the industry what does that mean the expansion of the industry would decrease the cost per unit production so you have the cost per unit production that would be decreased when you have economies which are external to the firm but internal to the industry and lastly you have economies external to the industry but internal to the urban area this means that urbanization economy includes the uh, rural uh, the rural urban and uh, the uh, the uh, rural labor market and the urban labor market so you have the urban economies that come into play in the third case so for example let's talk about regional variation so if i say bhilai bilai i can see is a classic example of being a steel hub or a steel center but bilai cannot be called as a growth pole or a growth center why because the development in and around bilai is not to an extent that it is kind of uh, actually utilizing the economies external to the industry and internal to the urban area so when i come to the third clause it leads a uh, kind of drawback here because this this example won't fulfill the third condition that uh, bodeville tried to explain so his theory was criticized as it is inapplicable or i could say it is not properly applicable to the regional problems that exist uh, it is it has kind of functional rigidities that exist in reality so you have the real space that is problematic in case of uh, the bodeville's theory which was explained the next was the hirschman's theory now these two theory that we will be covering in detail today hirschman try to explain under his theory the concept of trickle down and polarization so when he talked about the concept of trickle down and polarization he had his ideas back to mridal who talked about the concept of cumulative causation cumulative causation mridal talked about the spread effect 
how the industry is spread and how there is a kind of backwash effect. So rich man following the same pattern tried to give his idea which was classified as trickle down theory or the trickle down effect and the polarization effect. Now what's the basic difference between the two? When I say trickle down that means the innovation that is there in the developed region would trickle down or percolate to the surrounding areas. So you have a kind of development at say city center in uh, Delhi. So you have the Delhi region, the Delhi state capital that is being developed. That effect will percolate down to the NCR region. So you have the national capital region or the NCR region, the Gurugram region and the Muzaffar Nagar, the Jind Karnal and the nearby areas which will benefit from the trickle down effect of the main capital area. So this was the Rishman's idea of trickle down and this was similar to what was under Mridal's concept which was known as spread effect. So Mridal talked about this concept as a spread effect why Richmond talked about the same concept as trickle down. The next was polarization. <coughs> Excuse me. Under polarization, he tried to explain that most of the companies try to center around a common area because they have a kind of more competing platform there rather than opening up an industry in a peripheral area where you have transportation problem, where you have other regional issues, you would try to concentrate or localize your industry in the region where already uh, industries exist or there has been a prior infrastructure that has been developed. So that is what is Richmond's polarization. So he said rather than spreading out, the industry is trying to try to aggregate towards or agglomerate towards a common center and this polarization effect was similar to what was known as the backwash effect as given by Mridal. So Mridal in his theory tried to explain the backwash effect and this backwash effect was known as polarization under the Hirschman's theory. So basically Hirschman theory the main idea was to emphasize the external economies and while emphasizing the external economies he tried to explain that investors concentrate in the polarization zone primarily because they have a motive that this region is already prosperous or has good potentials. So if you invest in this region, the future potential of this region would be much higher. So that was the basic idea that Hitchman tried to explain and he said the regions which are developed or which are flourishing, which flourish will flourish further at a faster pace as compared to regions which are backward which will still uh, go down or I would say they would become further backward. So this was the main idea under Richman theory. The next came the Friedman. The Friedman explained, we have already talked about the Friedman's theory. So just a, a brief recap. His theory was basically explaining the concept that growth is externally induced and that impact of the growth is seen on the labor market and you have the migration patterns which are affected by this growth pattern. So with this we cover the theories of divergence. Now moving on to the theories of convergence. You have again the two basic ideas. You have the export based theory and the exogenous growth models. So when you talked about, when you talk about, sorry this has been wrongly written. You have the export based theory. Under the export based theory, you have the demand that is the primarily focus and the neoclassical exogenous theory which is the supply side. So you have the export based theory and the neoclassical exogenous growth theory. Now when it comes to export based theory, the main proponents were Douglas North. So Douglas North and Tibbot under their theory, under their theory try to explain that growth is determined by the uh, demand which is coming from the exogenous factors or I could say the demand which is present in other countries would generate growth in our country. For example, uh, if there is a huge demand for uh, festive decorative items in say the country of US, what would happen? They require a lot of uh, decorative items for Christmas. What would happen? That would lead to growth in the production of 
festive articles in India. So that is mainly due to the demand that has been generated in another country and that is leading to a growth of industry in a particular country. So you have Douglas North and Tibbet who talked about that export base or the demand is the basic idea because of which the growth takes place and they tried to explain growth under two heads. The first head <coughs> he tried to explain was the economic base which is mainly export driven. So if there is more, uh, more need for export there would be more economy that would be generated in a specific area. The other is the residentiary or the non-basic center. The non-basic sector would include the services which are mainly residentiary or which lie within the region. The next is the neoclassical exogenous growth model. Under this, the first one that we would consider is the Harrod and Domer model. <coughs> the Harrod and Domer model talks about the supply side. So their main focus was if there is a supply, the areas where that supply has to be fulfilled with will already be, will automatically be discovered. So if I am supplying, supplying and supplying, there would be the regions where you would use that supply. So their main idea was if you have the supply side, you would automatically find options where that supply would be compensated or uh, absorbed. So the main idea here under uh, Harrod's model was uh, the saving rate, the growth in the population and the technical progress. So this was one. The next was the Solo and Son. They again try to explain the supply side effect and they said besides the supply side effect there is another thing which is important and that is to generate conditional convergence wherever required. So if there is a condition you would supply there and that is kind of conditionally driven. So it's not a kind of perennial uh, uh, supply model that exists but rather it is a conditional convergence model. So it would converge only if there is a condition that emerges. And finally the last one is Bort and Steen. Bort and Steen under their theory tried again to propagate the same idea but they allowed opening up the regional economies and when, when they tried uh, opening up the regional economies they tried to explain that labor is exogenous and the basic idea was this labor should be absorbed properly. So this labor which is being utilized is exogenous or coming from outside and similarly you have the capital inflow which is again exogenous in nature. So these three uh, works uh, were related to the neoclassical exogenous growth theory where they explained that the growth is exogenous or external but it is mainly supply driven as opposed to the export based theory which is mainly demand driven. So in this lecture we have focused on two basic theories that is the Bordwell theory and the Hirschman theory and uh, among the, theory, uh, the classification for the regional development we have highlighted the two basic areas the economic convergence and the economic divergence. We will be covering few more lessons related to uh, regional development and regional planning in the subsequent classes. You can subscribe to our channel for more updates. Have a good day ahead.